Good morning, students. Uh, students, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Morning, ma morning, ma uh, thank you for uh, thank you for joining uh, today's session. Where we will morning, madam. Morning. Thank you for joining today's session where we will be talking about a uh, dissolution of a civil marriage. Uh, and we'll be discussing divorce, and today's topic will be the grounds of divorce. Can I please ask that we mute ourselves? Bawinile, please mute yourself. Please uh, mute yourself. Can you please all remain muted until, uh, unless if you want to ask a question or you want to say something. So let's start. Uh, the grounds of divorce. There are three grounds of divorce in South Africa, uh, which is irretrievable breakdown of a marriage, mental illness, and continuous unconsciousness. So can one of you explain to us, when we talk about irretrievable breakdown of a marriage, what are we talking about? Anyone? Students? Uh, Mukhau, Mukhau, you can unmute yourself. Good day, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine, Mukhau. I'm good. So, irretrievable marriage to me, it means that, from the way I understand it, it means that there's no grounds for any restore, restoration of the marriage. And then the, the relationship has been broken so that it cannot be restored. Okay, thank That's you for fine. that. By far. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Nkosana? Nkosana? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, my understanding in relation to irretrievable breakdown of a marriage is when the marriage has uh, no be a reasonable prospect that it can be restored again because of now uh, the spouses, um, they are no longer enjoying that um, a protection of a uh, com com community's vita. So which means uh, there is a period of a year that they are not staying together. They are separated even if they are residing in the same house, but they are no longer talking to each other. So that is my understanding in relation to the retrievable breakdown. OK, thank you, Nkosana. Maria? 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 Maria Iris? Okay. Okay, Maria? Okay, uh, I'm gonna meet Maria. Uh, Mbulawa? 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 Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mbulawa. Yes, my understanding is that in a in a marriage there has to be a mutual or mutuality of connection. In other words, there there must be seamless a, a, a mutual understanding between the two of you. If many of the things that connect you, many of the things that connect you as a married couple do not come together, it comes to a point where then. Uh, one by one of, of the most of the things that connect you get irretrievably broken down to an extent that it's not possible then to actually restore one of one or many of the pillars that connect you. You understand? For instance, if one of them is there is no community, one of them is could be when there is no om, uh, uh, omni, uh, uh, what is it, what is it, uh, sexual relations, which is the uh, um, uh, a uh, backbone of a marriage, then it means your marriage is really broken down because then there will be no prospect of such a thing because the main purpose of getting, of getting into a marriage relationship is to have a mutual consent in most of the things that you do. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Bulawa. Uh, let's hear what Butali, Butali are. Butali? Yes, good morning, madam. Morning. Yes, uh, like other speakers have already covered some of the things. I think, in my view, uh, uh, irretrievable a breakdown of marriage, I mean, entails, I mean, when the 
marriage can no longer be restored to its normality. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, when we talk about a uh, irritable breakdown of a marriage, uh, most of you are correct. It's when a marriage has reached a state of disintegration that there is no reasonable prospect of a restoration of a normal marriage relationship between the two spouses. Now, uh, can uh, some of you give us, uh, let me, Mutim uh, Bulawa, can some of you give us an example? Your, in your prescribed textbook, they talk about three main uh, factors of irretrievable breakdown of a marriage, but there are others. So can you tell me three main grounds that show that this marriage has irretrievably broken down? Uh, the first one, uh, uh, one of the students spoke about that is the spouses are no longer living together as husband and wife. Uh, can somebody give us one or uh, the other two, or even uh, other examples. When, a, let's say, a client, a prospective client comes to your office and says, okay, I want to file for divorce. What questions, uh, not what questions, how would you know that this, uh, the marriage has irretrievably broken down? Uh, what are the, uh, some of the examples that shows that, uh, for example, these parties or these spouses, their marriage is now over? Uh, let me ask uh, this question. If a prospective uh, a client comes to you and says, my husband has impregnated uh, his girlfriend, is that an example or a ground that shows that this marriage has irretrievably broken down? Uh, let's hear what uh, Somisa, Somisa, Somisa Fulani. Yes, ma'am, I think that is the ground for divorce because if I feel as the spouse that we cannot reconcile and work from that after uh, they've been um, adultery or someone has cheated, if I feel as a, a spouse we cannot reconcile and work um, going forward, then it's grounds for divorce. Okay, thank you uh, for that. Uh, Nkosana? Thank Nkosana? you, ma'am. I think, firstly, <clears throat> th I think your question is not uh, quite clear on this issue because <clears throat> one of the grounds is that, ma'am, if uh, one of the spouses committed adultery, so it would depend on the issue of adults, whether uh, when this child was conceived, they were in a marriage at the time at that particular time. So that's number one uh, issue that it needs to be clear. But the other, the other grounds is that there should be malicious um, desertion, desertion, and then there should be mental insanity, which constitutes the grounds for, um, uh, uh, grounds for divorce. So that is my understanding, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's say, Mbulawa, is your hand up? Mbulawa? Oh, my hand is not up. Okay. Uh, if your hand is not up, please uh, remove uh, your hand so that we can okay. see who's raising their hands and who's not raising their hands. Uh, Nkosana, thank you for that, but can I say that uh, mental illness is another ground for divorce, but it does not fall. It does not form part of an irretrievable breakdown of a of a marriage. There are three grounds under irretrievable breakdown of a marriage. Firstly, uh, the parties have not lived together as husband and wife for a continuous period of at least one year prior to the institution or filing of divorce. Secondly, the defendant or one of the spouses have committed uh, adultery and the other spouse finds it difficult uh, to continue with the marriage relationship. And the third one is the defendant or one of the spouse is a habitual criminal and their spouse uh, their spouse finds it difficult to continue with their marriage relationship or they have been 
imprisoned. But these are just examples. There are others. So my question now to you is, let's say a client comes to you and says, I've been married uh, with this man for two years now, and then in the two years, although we are not fighting, although uh, there is no adultery, I'm just not feeling this person. I am not in love with this person, and I want out of this marriage. Would you say uh, this is also a ground of, this is also, uh, let me just move to Mbulawa. Would you say this is also a ground for irretrievable breakdown of a marriage if a spouse's reason are just that I don't love this spouse anymore and I want out? Is a, not loving a person or not loving your spouse a good reason uh, to file for divorce? Uh, let's hear what uh, Ethel is saying. Ethel? Ethel? Hello. Hello, Ethel. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Yes, morning. that is that is one of the reasons that may can make a uh, court to consider granting divorce if one spouse is no more longer in love with another spouse. But if they have married, you married a person knowing that you are in you are not in love with that person then that is another way, that is another story because you knew before you married this person that you don't love this person. It, it might not be a good uh, a reason for, for marriage, for, for divorce, the grounds for divorce. But if you have married, you, you, you have discovered in the marriage that you are no more longer loving this person because of other reasons that might happen, maybe uh, there's no satisfaction of conjugal rights. The person is not uh, um, like the companionship, the affection, the comfort, the mutual services is no more longer there. Maybe that is when you realize, no, this person, I don't love this person anymore because of this reasons. That is another example of ground for divorce. Okay, okay. thank you so much. Uh, let's hear what Ethel, Ethel, is your hand up? No, I, I'm the oh, one who just... Oh, okay, yes. thank you. Uh, JC? 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 Okay, JC has put down uh, his or her hand. Nkosana, is your hand up? Yes, ma'am. I just want to augment it what my fellow colleague was saying. Uh, she's quite spot on on that issue, that um, adultery on this issue. It's one of the grounds which uh, the court may um, uh, institute an order for the divorce. <clears throat> and also to add on that, um, uh, as I've indicated earlier, that uh, there could no, there could be no marriage if there is no community. So it's one of the things, if we are no longer happy, which means that we are no longer, there's no longer love in that, uh, 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 is a, a, a marriage. So it's one of the things that the court might also consider in, in, in making that odd. So I just wanted to add that. Okay, thank you so much. On the issue of a spouse not uh, loving uh, their partner or their spouse, once, uh, once a spouse says, I no longer love or I'm no longer in love with my spouse and I don't want to continue with the marriage. Whether they got married and not really loving their spouse is going to be difficult to prove that. But what our law says is nobody can be forced to be in a marriage that they don't want to be part of. Because of that, uh, by just saying I am no longer in love, with my spouse and I do not want to continue with this marriage. That is a good ground that shows that this marriage has irretrievably broken down. If, however, there is a possibility that uh, through marriage counseling, the marriage can be saved, the court has a discretion to say, okay, let's postpone the proceedings so that uh, you, the spouses, can go and attend marriage counseling and see if uh, 
maybe the marriage can be saved. But if the marriage cannot uh, be saved, then the divorce will be granted. Uh, Brinsby, Brinsby, I see your hand is up. Brinsby. Hello. Yes, good morning. Sorry, I was trying morning. to eat. Yes. Um, I, I, I got all the reasons that um, uh, people are saying, but there's there's one thing that I just want to ask. Um, mm -hmm. um, we 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 currently seeing a situation of um, men who target uh, women who are resourceful, and um, they continuously en uh, engage in a relationship, then immediately go into a marriage, and a few years down the line they they, they get divorced. Do they also, does the law look at the man that how many times has he divorced money for the sake of uh, getting resources out of this woman? Thanks. Okay, uh, for that it's going to be difficult for the government to actually track that because divorce is uh, the department which is responsible for termination of the marriages is the Department of Justice. And the Department of Home Affairs is responsible for registration of marriages. So uh, the two departments, although they work together, they also don't work together in such a manner that it is easy to pick up that John got divorced uh, this week and two weeks later or two months later, uh, John is now getting married. The situation now is such that Spouses uh, who file for divorce, once they get their divorce degree, they need to go themselves to the Department of Home Affairs uh, to present the divorce degree so that the Home Affairs changes their status. Unlike before, where the system, uh, where the Department of Justice will send the information to the Department of Home Affairs uh, because of uh, various circumstances, is now becoming difficult for. Department of Home Affairs to know that, okay, now on the system, this one whose status is married is now unmarried. So there is really nothing the government can do about uh, men or women who keep on uh, getting married, divorcing, getting married and divorced because there is no law which says uh, how many times you're supposed to get married or how many times you're supposed uh, to get divorced. And the other challenge is that how will you prove that this individual, uh, they are getting married solely for the purpose of benefiting from their spouse? It can happen that they get married and the marriage unfortunately does not work out and because they don't believe in staying in unhappy situations, they just file for divorce, move to the next one. And because they also believe in marriage, they marry uh, the next person. So those who have been victims, unfortunately for them, those who have succeeded in uh, enriching themselves through getting married and divorcing, I guess uh, is working for them now. And yeah, uh, that's it. But it is very, very difficult to actually prove that uh, a person is only getting married to uh, enrich, uh, to enrich themselves, and not necessarily they have the intention of entering into a valid uh, marriage relationship. Come on, thank for that. Let's hear. Uh, who asked the question? Was it Lisa? No, uh, Lisa. Um, yes, ma'am. So I yes. wanted to ask a question just in relation to what Ethel said. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's her name. Um, regarding falling out of love, getting into a relationship and then, I mean, into a marriage rather, mm -hmm. and then knowing that you are not in love with the person. And then she then, she also meant, she mentioned something about how um, if you had, if you have prior knowledge of not being in love with this person, it might be difficult to file for divorce. However, if you fall out of love with the person during the course of the marriage, then the court can grant it. So now my question is in relation to people that are in arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. So is that automatically, or can we say that is automatically ground enough for someone to say, well, this person, this, this person did not decide to marry this man or this woman, they were forced into it or they were coerced into it, whatever the situation might have been by family. And they were never in love with the person. So hence they want to divorce. 
Okay, firstly, remember, in order to enter into a valid, recognized civil marriage, there are requirements that uh, you must comply with. So let's assume that in this arranged marriage, which was done, let's say it was done through the church, all the requirements uh, were complied with, and uh, let's say it's the wife. The wife says, when asked, uh, do you volunteer to enter into this marriage? And then they said yes. Uh, yeah. Although it is a, an unarranged marriage, because they voluntarily entered into it, they cannot now argue that I was forced, because by saying I was forced, then that is going to be a ground for declaring uh, that marriage null and void on the ground that uh, you were coerced, you entered into it under duress. You understand? It. So, yes, yes. Uh, by just saying, okay, maybe I was not in love, but I thought that upon us getting married, uh, love was going to grow and we were going to have a normal relationship. So, they can argue that, okay. Uh, unfortunately, that love did not develop because of that. I went out of this marriage. So, yes, it is a ground that I am not in love with this person because what I thought was going to happen, it did not happen. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. I understand. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Uh, the next one can we hear from Nosi, Nosi Pue? No CPW? It's actually a follow up on the possibility of a marriage counseling. So to ask in terms of does actually does it give like a period to say or does it depend on case by case to say we're giving six months or three months? that stipulated anyway in terms of the duration? Uh, students, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Hello. we can. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Okay, I was not hearing anybody. Okay, uh, Sam, Sam, your hand is up. Uh, sorry, my question wasn't answered. It wasn't answered or it was answered? No, it wasn't. Okay, uh, please repeat your question. I was asking with regards to the possibility of the marriage counseling being mm -hmm. on the cards. Mm -hmm. Is there a duration, for example, to say from the court perspective to say we're giving you six months or three months to work it out or does it depend on a case by case? No, it depends on a case by case, but there is no duration. So normally uh, what the court will do is will just uh, postpone the matter. In other instances, they will give uh, another date for the parties to come to court. In other instances, they will not give a date. They will just uh, inform uh, the parties that, okay, you can return if you have, you return and apply for a new court date if uh, the marriage counseling did not work. Okay. No, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Godfrey? 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 Uh, this is Sam, ma'am. Okay, Sam, uh, you can talk. Yeah, ma'am. Since uh, di uh, divorce is, is, is encompassed with the, the clean break principle and vested in the, uh, the Divorce Act, uh, my question is, um, you spoke of uh, of marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, in in order for for for, for a court to de to dissolve the the, the the marriage bond, what does the court look look at in in, in respect to divorce? Uh, the court looks at whether has the marriage irretrievably broken down, which is what we are talking about now. We are talking about examples which uh, you can show to the court that my client's marriage has 
uh, irretrievably broken down because uh, yeah. uh, the parties have not lived together. Uh, mm. There has been adultery. Uh, <laughs> one of the or the parties, both of them, uh, no longer are no longer in love with each other, and they are both in agreement that it is not in the best party in the best interest of both of them that they continue with this marriage relationship. But, yes. So that is one uh, of the reasons we are going to talk about the, the other two reasons that you can show uh, in court that the marriage uh, has uh, the divorce must be granted. Okay. So okay. Uh, um, mem- uh, another question would be um, if uh, both both parties who are uh, 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 in a divorce proceedings uh, have not went under. Um, uh, uh, counseling and they they, they did not uh, uh, see a need to to go through counseling will still the court uh, 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 grant a, a divorce order or will uh, the court said ask if maybe have they taken steps in order to save their marriage or not okay uh, it is not a legal requirement that your spouse is must go uh, for marriage counseling. It is advisable and the parties can state that uh, they do not uh, see that even if they go for marriage counseling, the marriage uh, relationship will be saved. Yeah, I'm okay. asking this question because I, 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 was, I once went to a, 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 a sitting in, in, in high court around mm-hmm. where I, I live and then the judge um uh, 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 ask the question to the to the, to the plaintiff if uh, 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 they have acquired a, a, a marriage counseling and the response of, the, of of the plaintiff was no they have not and then the court says but the court is not satisfied that this marriage has irretrievably bro- uh, broken down yes even so, though it is even though there is no, it is not a legal uh, it is not a a a requirement that mm, there should mm. be a report of of of, of a, a, a a report of a of, of a marriage counselor to be to be filed together with with divorce papers and all documents in order for the court to to, to give an, uh, to dissolve the the marriage bond. Yeah. Okay. In your example, uh, the problem now is okay. Just hold on. I just want to move. Okay. Just hold, okay, I'm gonna move everybody. Okay. In the example that you have just given, the grounds that the parties uh, stated in their pleadings, the court was not satisfied. This is the reason why the presiding officer said, I am not convinced that the marriage has irretrievably broken down. So the presiding officer did not say, but you have to go for marriage counseling. He just said, you have not convinced me. So it depends on what they had said that uh, led to the presiding officer not to be convinced Mm -hmm. that you know what. So the presiding officer, uh, based on what was happening, uh, reached a conclusion that there is a possibility that this marriage can be saved, although uh, the presiding officer cannot give an order that go for marriage counseling. No, it's clear. Okay, thank you. Uh, Muraba? Muraba? Yes, Muraba? Ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can talk, Muraba? Uh, good morning, everyone. Morning, um, Muraba. I want to ask if the, the marriage counseling is the responsibility of the court or the government. Okay, what do you mean the responsibility of the court or the government? Are you talking in terms of payment, in terms of providing yes. services? Uh, what do you mean? In terms of payment and providing the services. Okay, uh, it is the responsibility of the parties uh, to arrange their own uh, marriage counseling, but there are government institutions that provide free uh, marriage counseling. For example, I know that the Department of Social Development does uh, assist uh, for, for for spouses who do not have the means to pay a, a private counselor or a private marriage uh, counselor. 
So it is not necessarily the duty of the government. It is definitely not the duty of the court because the court only deals with legal matters. And marriage counseling is for trying to save uh, the marriage and not necessarily a part and parcel of uh, court services. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, uh, can we have Liberty? Liberty? Good morning. morning, Liberty. Yes. Um, okay, I wanted to ask uh, with regards to... Uh, I understand that um, into the Divorce Act 70 of 1929, uh, I think there is the no-fault um, no fault system um, that applies to our divorce law. Yes. So um, with, with adultery, isn't it... Um, since the court has the discretion to grant a divorce, uh, is it? Um, can I? Okay, I wanted to say, is it possible that uh, the only concede adultery more as evidence that you can present before the court? And and let's say the the divorce uh, the divorce matter is opposed by the let's say the defendant. Is it possible that court can choose not to grant it? Let's say it's opposed. Okay. Because the hotel is not a ground for divorce, but it is some uh, it is uh, evidence that you can present before the court. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that question. Uh, firstly, uh, the court's discretion to grant or to refuse to grant a divorce uh, through case uh, legislation, it has been confirmed that the court does not necessarily have the discretion to refuse to grant a divorce with the exception of Section 5A of the Divorce Act. There are three important cases that you must know when it comes to the court's discretion to refuse a, di a, a divorce. And the two most important cases are Levy versus Levy and Schwartz, uh, that is S C H. W A R T Z, uh, where the Supreme Court of Appeal in an obita dictum said that or expressed the view that the court do not have a discretion and that the divorce must be granted once it has been proven that the marriage has irretrievably broken down. So if a spouse proves that uh, my husband or my wife committed adultery and I do not want to continue with this marriage as a result. The court has no choice but to grant the divorce. The exception with the court's uh, powers to refuse to grant a divorce is with Section 5. A5 capital A, where the spouses are married in terms of civil, uh, the marriage act, but also married, got married in terms of uh, religious right, where in terms of their religious right, there are certain processes that must be uh, followed in order for the marriage to also be uh, terminated in terms of their religious belief. So if, uh, let's say, in terms of the Divorce Act, uh, the court can uh, terminate the marriage party in terms of uh, the religious uh, right, that marriage will still not be terminated until there are certain uh, steps that the spouses uh, must follow. The court then has the discretion of saying you must firstly follow those steps so that when we terminate uh, the marriage from the civil, uh, uh, when we ter terminate the civil marriage, automatically even the religious marriage will be terminated. So it is for your, for the purpose of your studies, it is very important to note that the court does not necessarily have a discretion to refuse to terminate the marriage with the exception of Section 5, uh, capital A. Uh, do you understand the liberty? Have I answered you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, can we hear from Doe? Uh, Doe? Doe? Uh, Do, Do, D O U G. Do, can you hear us? 
Okay, uh, let's check others. Uh, can we hear from... So, Misa, is your hand up again? So, Misa? Yes, uh, okay, you can. Yes, uh, I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask what if one of the parties does not want to sign the divorce papers? And also, what if, um, is it possible for me to get divorced and then also marry uh, the same partner later on locally? Is it okay. allowed? Okay, uh, let me start with the second question. It is allowed because there is no law prohibiting ex-spouses from getting married to each other again. Uh, your first question, if your uh, this goes to a uh, okay, if your spouse refuses to accept the divorce summons, divorce summons can only be served by a sheriff of court. If uh, your spouse refuses to accept the divorce summons and then you tried by other means, let's say the attorneys, as an attorney, you try to uh, send an email to the defendant and a family member, say, of your client also tried to speak uh, with the defendant and then the sheriff, the sheriff at least must go uh, but first look go uh, first time and must also attempt again to go if the defendant is still not cooperating you and your client can bring a court application requesting permission to save the divorce summons using other means previously the means uh, this process is called substituted divorce previously the means will be to say uh, to have the divorce summons published in the newspaper but uh, uh, these days the court does grant permission for the summons to be saved by way of email or to be saved by way of uh, whatsapp but for the court to give that order, you must prove to the court that you attempted uh, to save personally because the divorce summons must be pay, uh, saved personally, but the defendant was not cooperating and you had no choice but to approach the court to request an order that the summons be saved using other means. Do you understand? So, so that's how... Yes, okay, what, what, if, if, what if the person still doesn't want to sign because maybe they are scared, maybe we are married in community of property and they are actually worried that now uh, we're going to have to split property and they don't, they, they just don't want to get divorced because of the consequences of divorce. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Uh, if uh, the court gives an order that you can save via email, they don't have to sign anything you have to send them by email and have proof so in most of their emails you will do that report where it said you know a uh, you must receive a uh, descent report and then also maybe receive the red report if you have been granted permission to save by email you just need to prove to the court that the email was sent on this day. So the reason why there is substituted divorce service is to also accommodate those situations where the spouse or the defendant refuses to sign the divorce summons. And that is a good enough. As long as you have proven to the court that there is no other way of saving the summons because the defendant is not cooperating, you uh, there is a good possibility or a good chance that the the court will grant an order that save the summons through email. Whether uh, he's going to open the email, that is no longer a, a problem of the client. If you and your client is no longer your problem, as long as you can prove that you have followed the court order. Do you understand? Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, uh, and then let's, following that, following okay. that question, Who's also to like okay. Sam. Okay, Sam. Following that question, um, I, I'm, I'm clear on, on what you just explained. Following that question, can a, a divorce order be rescinded? And if not, why? 
Yes, a divorce order can be rescinded. For example, if it was obtained uh, fraudulently, or uh, most of the time, if it was obtained uh, fraudulently, or uh, if the defendant, uh, for whatever good reasons, that uh, they can convince the court that we need to rescind uh, this court judgment. But most of the time, if the process was followed, the correct process was followed to the T. It is often very unlikely that uh, the court will resent the divorce order. But your answer is yes, it can okay. be rescinded. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, it, it change the state? Uh, is the court inclined to change the status of parties? What do you mean, uh, change the status of parties? Remember, the, those the, uh, those parties were now divorced. Now, if it rescinds, it, it, it takes back the the, 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 the the parties to be married. Yes, that is isn't, the isn't, is it, isn't the right route a variation, not a, 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 a rescission? Remember, if uh, the court order is rescinded, you are taken back to uh, to the to your position before there was a court order, and then the process will start again. Mm -hmm. It does not necessarily mean that the spouses must now continue with their marriage relationship, but the reason why the order was rescinded because of a default that uh, was that is in such a manner that the court had no choice but to say let's rescind this judgment so that the process starts again as i said a good example is when a divorce was fraudulently obtained and a divorce is usually fraudulently obtained through substituted service where a spouse will allow the plaintiff uh, we lie uh, to the court and say, I do not know the whereabouts of okay. uh, my spouse, of the defendant. And once the order has been granted and the defendant becomes mm -hmm. aware, as long as they can prove that they are they are whereabouts were always known and it was never brought to their attention that uh, a divorce uh, process was being instituted, the sheriff never uh, came to them, then that one okay. will have to be rescinded. Okay. Oh, no. I understand. I understand. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, can we hear from... Uh, okay. Let's start. Uh, Mbulawa, is your hand up? Mbulawa? Okay, let's move. So, Misa? So, Misa? Okay. No. <laughs> Okay, who's speaking? Um, I just didn't put my hand down. Okay. Uh, I'm no, so sorry, sir. I just didn't put my hand down. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. No, sir. Hello. Hand up. No, sir. Okay, morning. Yes, yeah, it's okay. Morning. Um, my question is, I want to know, does marrying a person under false pretenses constitute uh, an irretrievable breakdown of the marriage? Okay, it can be an irritable breakdown. For example, if A were to marry B on the reason that B is pregnant. Okay. Uh, and that, later on finds out that B is not pregnant. Okay, that one can go to uh, the validity of a marriage. You can bring a, a court application to have the marriage declared null and void so that this status is going to be as if it never existed uh, from the start. And your reason is because there was a misrepresentation. So oh, remember, there okay. is a difference uh, between uh, bringing a court application to have the marriage declared null and void and bringing a court application for a divorce. Bringing a court application to have the marriage declared null and void, the result it will be that uh, the marriage never existed from the onset and there is not going to be sharing of any assets. Let's say the parties were married in terms of property. But if you are bringing a court application for termination of a marriage through divorce, mm -hmm. then there's going to be a, the matrimonial consequences of a divorce sharing if you are married in terms of 50-50, uh, sharing if you are married in terms of property or a, a qual calculation. And that we're going to talk about when we talk about the consequences of a divorce. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Muraba? Muraba? My hand is down, ma'am. Okay. Ngosana? Uh, Ngosana, is your hand up? Yes, yes it's up, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, let me first uh, thank you for the explanation that we, has, we have provided us. Uh, I just need, to, I think I've, uh, you've crystallized your position in relation to the powers of the court, uh, um, which uh, their powers are vested in Section 5. So mm -hmm. I do understand that one. So I just want us to go to the guidelines of Section 4.2, uh, 4.2b. Mm -hmm. Just want to ascertain, ma'am, uh, the approach of the court as to how do they deal with a situation whereby uh, one of the spouses has committed adultery. Mm -hmm. and then there is no evidence. There is no collection of evidence to be provided before the court. And myself, the other spouse as a defendant is going to the court on a continuous basis to go and defend his position to say, I've never committed any adult. So how is the court, uh, what is the application of the court in obtaining evidence uh, uh, based on the hearsay? Because I, I would assume in most of the cases when there is adultery, let's leave the issue that there was a child mm -hmm. uh, that was conceived because of mm -hmm. the other spouses has uh, ventured into a relationship and then there was a child. Let's assume there's no child. I was involved in adults and then I just want to check the approach of the court and also uh, uh, taking a uh, section 4.2a in mm -hmm. cognizance of the statement because now such things they might constitute a lack of consortium because of now the other spouse is now is no longer interested and sleeping with the partner, so there is no longer that compassionate. Maybe then I just want to ascertain whether the consortium, it can be the proof to say we are no longer sleeping together because of the other one, and it has been a duration of a certain time that we are not sleeping together. So the court might take that as a basis that there was adultery that it was committed in that regard. So I just want clarity in that now. I think you've understand my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for your question. Okay, when it comes to adultery, and then it's a, a this one is saying yes, uh, you had an affair, and the other spouse is saying no, I did not have an affair. Although they they can let's say there is no proof of that, the court's uh, responsibility or the court's duty is firstly to ensure that this marriage has irretrievably broken down. So if a, the plaintiff cannot prove that they, uh, there was a adultery, now the question is, based on other things, for example, can this uh, marriage continue with this allegation? Has trust been lost? Because when it uh, comes to the issue of adultery and accusations there's also the issue of a uh, trust the question now is has the marriage reached such a state that the parties can continue uh, can, okay can, has the marriage reached such a state uh, that the parties can live uh, together as husband and wife remember i said that in law no person can be forced to be in a marriage that they do not want to be part of. Let's say the plaintiff is unable to prove that there was indeed adultery, but they are able to prove that, you know, what, the marriage or the situation between me and my husband or between the husband and the wife, it is now in such a manner that even if there was no adultery, these two spouses, will not be able to have a normal relationship because the trust has been broken, communication has been broken. So to prove the irretrievable uh, breakdown ground, there is a whole list of them just by saying, I do not longer want to continue with this marriage because I uh, no longer trust uh, this person, even if a uh, we can go for marriage counseling. I don't think anything will change. That alone is a good ground for saying, you know what, uh, the marriage uh, has now failed. So the key words are 
the marriage has reached such a state that it cannot or uh, it will not go back to the normal marriage relationship. So the question that you must ask is, will these two parties have a normal marriage relationship? If the answer is yes, then the court can say, okay, let's postpone the matter so that you try and fix your marriage. If the answer is no, even if, uh, even if, uh, the accusations of adultery were not proven, then the plaintiff would have succeeded because they uh, because they have shown the court that there is no or there can never be a normal marriage relationship between me and my spouse. Uh, do you understand, Ngosan? Ngosana, unmute yourself. Yes. Yes, I do understand you quite clear. And it's just that I'm worried. I've asked this question intentionally because now it appears that the court is taking the plaintiff uh, uh, approach more than of a defendant in that in this regard. Because now if the one would come and allege, despite that there is no prima facie evidence, then the um, gratitude will be given to that person who has come to make that such a claim then it becoming it's becoming a worrying matter but i've understood your position ma'am because at times uh, people might enter in a marriage because of they want particular uh, interest in that and then if now they are going to go in court and say no no i'm no longer happy then there is no appetite by the court uh, to try and establish uh, some meeting some certain mechanism to try and um uh, uh, remedy then it's a problem but i understood your position ma'am Okay, uh, what is important to note is that no adult can be forced or no person can be forced to continue with the marriage that they no longer want to be part of. So this is uh, the biggest challenge that the court is facing, even if uh, the court can say, okay, you really were not uh, able to convince or to prove that this marriage has irretrievably broken down. But now the question is, do we say because you did not prove the ground for divorce, go back and have, uh, go back to your spouse and continue with your marriage, even if you have showed or you have informed us that I do not want to continue with this marriage. So that is where now the problem is. And so that is why the court uh, these days, uh, once we are out of a uh, lockdown, uh, when you have a chance, just go and attend one of the divorce uh, uh, matters in any in any court. Then you will see the challenges that uh, the presiding officers are usually faced with because they cannot force a person. Yes, they do postpone uh, matters, but most of the time matters are postponed and then they usually say to the parties, go and uh, further discuss how you're going to divide your matrimonial estate. But they really uh, postpone a matter because they believe that the marriage can be saved unless the two spouses themselves, the two parties agree that, okay, let's go. We are going to go back and seek marriage counseling and try and make this marriage work. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, let's hear thank from. You. Okay, thank you, Kosana. Let's hear from Binello. 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 Okay, let's move. Let's hear from Cynthia. 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 Yes, I'm sorry. Hi. Sorry. Okay. I'm um, I actually just wanted you to explain the subjective and the objective approach that the court uses. I did read, but I didn't actually understand how they how, like it's put into action to say okay, the subjective approach was used here and the objective approach was used. What I did get was that the objective approach is when uh, it's that as soon as the plaintiff. Um, puts a, a sues or puts a, a, a case for divorce, that's when they are 
allowed to get the dis divorce it's then the objective approach and then the subjective within when the court takes into consideration its own uh, interpretation of what's actually happening in the marriage and then there was also something i didn't understand um so i'm just checking quickly uh about section four and five and then it was okay section four and section three where i think it was okay since yeah Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Cynthia, uh, I really, can you please send uh, your question either on the email or on the chat because uh, there was background noise. I think you are in the office, so I could not hear you at all. And I see from the chat there are others who are also saying uh, they cannot hear you. Please uh, write on the chat. Right, okay, thank you for that. Uh, Godfrey? Hello, ma'am. Yes, hello, hello ma'am. Okay, 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 Godfrey. Wait. Okay, uh, Winello will come back to you. Uh, let's hear Godfrey, then we're coming to Winello. Godfrey? Yes, I just wanted to ask if an abusive marriage can also be added on the example of irretrievable breakdown of a marriage. Yes, yes, uh, it's one of the good examples uh, of that. Because remember, as I always say, as I have been saying that the court will not force anybody uh, to continue with a marriage that they do not want to. They will not force a spouse to continue with a marriage where there is abuse. Abuse is one of the grounds for irretrievable breakdown of a marriage. Thank you for your question. Winello? Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for giving me an opportunity. Uh, my question is, if, say, for instance, um, uh, uh, people got married a long time ago before mm -hmm before the marriages were registered on the system, right? Like maybe say 1982, 1980, before mm -hmm. they could register the, the marriage. And then these people uh, maybe separated, but didn't divorce, separated before them, before they could, they could update their, their marriage on the system. And then uh, one of them, one of the spouses, uh, decided to get married to someone else later on without without divorcing from the person uh, from the first wife or the first mm -hmm. husband um the second marriage with with the second marriage be recognized okay uh, firstly the spouse who alleges that there is an existing marriage must bring a high court application to prove that the marriage was not dissolved. So the first thing is they need to prove that they entered into a marriage. So if it was uh, those marriages, uh, long marriages where there were not marriage, uh, marriage certificates, and when the law now or the policies now allowed for spouses to come and do late registration and they did not uh, use that opportunity, they must apply, uh, they must bring a high court application to prove that they are in an existing uh, marriage. Once they have proven that the second uh, expected they need to prove that the marriage was not terminated it is still in existence if they succeed on these two uh, grounds then the subsequent marriage is going to be declared null and void uh, your example is uh, what is currently happening now in many matters but involving unregistered customary marriages and subsequent uh, marriages where a spouse entered into a civil marriage with another spouse. So the first spouse, let's assume, is the one who was married uh, in 1993 and there was no marriage certificate. As long as they can prove that they entered into a valid marriage and it was not terminated, then the subsequent civil customer, uh, the civil marriage is going to be declared null and void. Okay, no, I okay. understand. Ma'am, I have another, I have another. Okay. Uh, my second question is, if, if say for instance, uh, 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 people are married in, 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 in community of property, they have a civil marriage, and then the, the husband, for instance, wants to take uh, a second wife, would they have to dissolve the, the, the civil marriage? And I, I, I don't understand. Would they have to dissolve the first marriage and maybe uh, marry customarily? Or how, how does that work? Okay, civil marriages are monogamous. 
in other words, they are monogamous and they are heterosexual. So it can only be between a man and a woman. So if a husband in South Africa, only men are allowed to take more than one wife or more than one spouse. So if a husband wants to enter into a further marriage and have polygamy, the civil marriage must be terminated through divorce. It must be terminated through divorce and the husband must marry all the women through customary law processes. That is when they are going to have polygamy. Okay, okay. No, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's hear from Lisa. Lisa, is your hand up? Lisa? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. All right. Yes. So um, I just wanted to find out something. Am I correct to assume or to conclude rather that when it comes to the irretrievable breakdown of a marriage, the because it's a bit of a hearsay from what everyone is discussing and what we're discussing now, the class and what we're learning, um, am I correct to then conclude that in the in these matters or matters relating to irretrievable breakdown of a marriage, the case must be proven on a balance of probabilities rather than beyond reasonable doubt? Yes, it must be proven on a balance of probabilities. And this and the other thing is uh, you just round your count on the pleadings. Uh, the divorce processes now we've got what we call contested divorce and uncontested divorce. Uncontested divorce is when the parties uh, enter into a settlement. Most of the time they enter into a settlement agreement where uh, they decide on their own how they're going to uh, divide their matrimonial estates and they write the grounds uh, on the summons. Contested divorce, uh, it can be on two uh, ways uh, matters. Firstly, one of the parties can contest that the marriage has not irretrievably broken down, but because uh, the other uh, party can uh, either convince the court or even if they don't convince the court, the court because it cannot force them to continue in a marriage that they do not want to be part of uh, can grant them a divorce on that matter. In other words, uh, the irretrievable breakdown ground is that they no longer have love, they no longer have respect, there is no longer good communication between the two parties. And the other ground for contested is when the parties have been able to prove when the when the parties have been able to prove that the marriage has irretrievably broken down, but they are not in agreement regarding division of their matrimonial estate, which is something that we're going to talk about uh, in the next session, in the next session. So that is right, but you are correct. It's on the balance of probabilities and it's just something that it is written down on, uh, on the pleadings, on, on in the summons and uh, the court most of the time, especially the regional court, which now have the power to also terminate the marriage. They just take what is written uh, on the pleadings. Uh, thank you right, for thank that, you Lisa. Much, okay, Tobile? 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 Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, uh, you can ask Tobile. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. What I wanted to find out, in, in cases of the settlement, you know, for the divorce, when the parties are married in community of property, is, I have a scenario here where the wife, during the proceedings of the divorce, she resigned from her job just so to keep her pension money to herself. And then the conditions that she has put on the settlement is that the matrimonial house that they shared with the ex-husband and the kids, it must be returned to, her, it must be transferred to her name. And she wanted to take the, the husband's car because it's a it's an expensive car. But in the, at the very same time, she did not want to share any of her assets as per the rules of the fifth, of each spouse getting 50-50 when they are married in community of property. So does the law not uh, protect such people? Because when it looks like this settlement is is just saving the one party, which is the ex-wife in this case, what are, what are the recourses that are allowed for, in terms of the law to prevent such party taking advantage? Because the okay. husband in this case is desperate to get the divorce settled as soon as possible. But I also feel he's getting the short end of the stick. Thanks. 
Okay, remember, as I said, a settlement agreement are in an uncontested divorce. Uh, your scenario is such that this divorce proceeding have, has to be contested because uh, there are, for example, the pension. You say the spouse, the wife has withdrawn their pension so their husband can contest that i want my 50 percent share of uh, the pension and also when it comes to division of the joint estate i want my fair division my fair share of the 50 percent if the husband is desperate unfortunately that desperation is the one that is going to lead him uh, to make decisions that in the end will seem unfair to him. But if he voluntarily uh, signs, enters into a settlement agreement and signs and say, I agree that this is how the matrimonial estate is going to be divided, then he has himself to blame and nobody else because the law or the courts do not force spouses to enter into settlement agreements. As I said, there is an option of saying, I am not in agreement with this. Let this divorce proceedings now be contested. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I just want uh, to say, because I see now it's five past 11, I just want to say the three reasons uh, besides irretrievable breakdown of the marriage, secondly, is incurable mental illness and continuous unconsciousness, uh, unconsciousness, unconsciousness, and uh, yeah, is incurable, is Breakdown, irritable breakdown of the marriage, that is number one. Number two is incurable mental illness. And the third one is continuous unconsciousness. It is important that you know these three reasons, especially the irritable breakdown of the marriage. It's also important uh, that you know the court's discretion to refuse a uh, divorce. As I said, the court does not necessarily have the discretion to refuse to grant a divorce order with the exception of Section uh, 5A of the Divorce Act. Uh, student, I'm sorry that uh, I could not take all of your questions. I see that we still have others uh, who wants to raise, uh, who wants to ask uh, further questions. Please, please, uh, if you want to talk to me, feel free to send me an email. Last week, I received uh, quite a whole lot of emails. So if I have not responded back to you, can I please ask that you resend me uh, the email? Just send me the email so that I make sure that I do not miss anybody. My email address is monarin, M-O-N-A-R-K-N, at unisa.ac.za. Uh, thank you for joining uh, today's session. Uh, we will meet again next week where we continue again with the uh, topic of divorce. Please uh, read. I will send a, a notice on the announcement. Please uh, just make sure that you prepare for next week's session. Uh, thank you so much and have a good day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. That was beautiful. Bye, Bulawa. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Bye, students. Bye.